Today in FactsWise, you get to do a self-assessment sort. Now, you've maybe already talked about self-assessment with your teachers, and one of the great things about it is that it's a way to know how you're doing with learning something. So for instance, this student is learning how to cook, and she's self-assessing the food that she made. And as it turns out, she sort of likes it. She sort of thinks she's getting pretty good at it, but there's something that's missing. I wonder if she's missing a little bit of salt or maybe a little bit of spice. So today you're going to be doing a self-assessment sort with your goal one multiplication facts that you're learning. And the way this works is that you're going to take a piece of paper and you can fold it into thirds. And in the three columns, you're going to head them, I know these, and I have a part whole strategy for these, maybe with a little smiley face, and I still need to work on these. And then you're going to take slips of paper or maybe um, some cards that have the facts on them for goal one multiplication and you're going to stack them up, sort of shuffle them and stack them up. And then you're going to take the top card and you're going to look at it and you're going to decide whether for, let's say, 2 times 10, you were able to solve it quickly and confidently and by memory. A lot of people say, I just know it when they have it memorized. If 2 times 10 in this case, was just like that for you, then you would put the 2 times 10 card in the I know these column. The next fact that you might draw is 9 times 10. And if you had a part whole strategy, like let's say you thought about 10 times 10 is 100, and so you just took away 110, and that gave you 90, and you were able to do that pretty quickly with that kind of a strategy, or maybe you said 5 times 10 is 50, and another 4 tens is 40, so 50 plus 40 is 90. That would be part whole thinking as well. So as long as you can solve it quickly with a part whole strategy, it goes in the middle column. Now, what about 8 times 10? I was talking to a student who was doing the self-assessment, and the student said, you know, I'm just kind of slower on the 8 times 10, and I wasn't very confident, and I know I used some skip counting. I kind of went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And when you're skip counting, eventually it slows you down and really gets in your way. So we want to help you move away from skip counting to one of the other types of strategies. So. If you didn't get the answer right, if you didn't know the answer, if you needed to use skip counting, or even if you used one of the other methods, but you were just kind of slow, then in that case, you would put your card in the far right column. Now, after you're done with all of the cards, it would be really good for you to write a sentence or two explaining what you think about how you're doing and what you want to do next to get even better. So in this case, this student said, I'm doing well with most of goal one multiplication. I'm going to spend extra time practicing eight times 10, that makes 80, and seven times 10, that makes 70, and I'm going to use penguin strips. And I also want to play the times 10 game with my brother. So for that student, the student had figured out what was going well and what still needed a little work and had a plan for what to do to get even better. By the way, if you're using two-sided counters and you've written the facts on one side and the products on the other with dry erase markers so that you can reuse them from goal to goal, you can also do this activity and you just wouldn't flip them over to the back sides where the answers were already written. You just kind of scatter them around your desk out of order and then be able to pick them up one at a time, just kind of randomly and do this activity. So 
have fun and learn a lot.